Okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about how tablet weaving works. Now, this is not really tablet weaving for weavers. This is tablet weaving from the perspective of an engineer who wants to understand how it works. So, this is not a tutorial and probably won't be that useful to most of you. So, first, I will just quickly show you my... Uh, regular eight shaft loom. This works how the vast majority of looms work. There um, are warp threads go through heddles and each thread can have two positions. It can either be up or it can be down and when it's down there's a uh, shed here between the up and down threads that you pass the weft through. So. Uh, with this particular loom, there are eight different shafts that let me have eight different groups of threads moved in one go. There are some other looms like rigid header looms or uh, inkle looms or various types of uh, pickup weaving where you would only have two groups. So you'd have half the threads up and half the threads down at any given time. And then you would manipulate individual threads with your fingers if you needed to pick one up from the bottom or drop one from the top. And that's how would you get patterning. But uh, you'd still have the same basic threads up or threads down. In tablet weaving, it's far, far more complicated. You have more options for each thread. You can see uh, my tablets here each have four threads in, which is standard. You can use uh, different numbers. Uh, there are hexagonal tablets that have six holes in, but generally you have uh, four. And each of these four threads can be in each position, so each one thread has uh, four options of where it can be and also you need to consider whether to get to that position it had been moved forwards or backwards, so uh, far far more variables. You can also see from this direction that some of the uh, tablets face that way and some face this way that's uh, not actually an extra variable because uh, a tablet faced that direction turned forward gives the same end result as a tablet face this direction turned backwards. This is just uh, for convenience because it means I can turn all the edge tablets same direction, same time. I can get this little V shape with the selvage rather than having all my selvage threads going the same way and uh, getting not quite as neat a result. So uh, a few features of the loom, apart from the, uh, the tablets, we need enough distance here at the front to be able to fit the shuttle in between the uh, shed that's formed. So it's, it's not that long, but the distance here at the back needs to be quite long because every time these uh, tablets are turned it adds a twist and uh, at the front the twist is caught up within this pattern but at the back this twist just builds and builds and builds and you need somewhere for it to go so you either need a lot of space on the loom you need a uh, weighted loom so the threads can hang off the back and untwist themselves or some people use swivels. Uh, I've got loads of twists built up here in my selvage threads from the last few picks, uh, the last few repeats sorry and uh, before starting this pick I've actually uh, reversed the direction of these cards. I just uh, twisted them like that I'm going to put that one back. Um, so now, as I work turning them forwards, this will slowly undo itself and this built up twist will undo. But uh, you do need quite a long uh, loom if you're using a continuous warp like this one just to allow to uh, deal with all this built up twist. The middle threads have not got any twist in at all because I stopped at the end of a repeat. So uh, this pattern is twist neutral. Uh, some patterns are not, and you may work and work and work and build up loads and loads of twist in the middle and then only reverse direction halfway through or maybe not at all. Um, other features... Um, I mean these particular tablets, uh, I 3D printed them 
with, uh, let's see if you can see the face of one. I put a circle on one face so I know which is the front, and it's got a little notch here at the top, so I can see while I'm weaving that all these tablets here are back in their original starting position. Uh, just helps me keep track a little bit, otherwise people uh, tend to label them. There are different labelling conventions, the one I work with is A, B, C, D and uh, you'll thread according to that in your uh, pattern. Uh, as you work, turning these, I've got an open shed here, turning the tablets moves the uh, these threads from the top if I turn them forwards, that thread will move into that position and all the threads will rotate, meaning there's a little crossing over it here. And that's how the pattern works. Generally, you will turn the threads just uh, 90 degrees, either forwards or backwards. There are patterns that have you turn 180 degrees, but that's uh, they're more complicated. Mostly, it's just 90 degrees. So, uh, I think that is all about how this actually works so I'll stick the camera on a tripod and we have a shoot few pics to show you okay so I'm ready to weave my pattern I have my uh, draft here because I cannot memorize this pattern yet first I'm moving the salvage tablets forwards then I'm moving this group backwards and this middle group forwards and I will check the thread shed is open down here. Beat the last one into place. Pass the shuttle. And again, my next pick is forwards. Forwards. Backwards. Again, check my threads. Beat. And pass the shuttle. And my next pick pattern changes uh, slightly, so I'm getting rid of these two cards back up there, keeping these ones, putting those ones back. So. Forward, backwards. Forward, and again, forward, backwards, forward. Forward, backwards, There you go, that's a quarter of the pattern repeat. You can see I started about here and uh, I've done that uh, little bit of pattern. So, uh, it's uh, be a fairly complicated uh, procedure to automate because uh, the uh, far more different options for each position of each thread than uh, with normal weaving, but I would be uh, interested to see what you come up with.